Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, seismicity, exoplanets, and plasma physics in the solar wind. There's a lot happening today, so stick around to the end as we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star were not tremendously active, but not silent either. The southern coronal hole is the most dominant feature in the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes, but the little, one sunspot active region is doing a bit of a Napoleon impression. Lots of crackling at the tiny group, even gave the X-ray flux a small case of the hiccups this morning. But alas, it is small and in relative decay. The solar wind continued its decay, descending as plasma speed drops back beneath 300 kilometers per second this morning. It's a very weak stream, and geomagnetic conditions are calm and quiet. The big story on Earth yesterday was in Turkey. Death toll going to rise as they're still tearing through the rubble looking for survivors from a magnitude 6.7 that struck shallow in the region. It shook the entire eastern half of the country and even some of the bordering Middle Eastern territories. It did strike the largest of our red alert zones on the watch map as the signals were clear from that region. And as I mentioned, cleanup is ongoing, daylight has come in the east and hopefully the search for survivors benefits from it. Let's go to exoplanets, hot Jupiters. The close-in gaseous monsters, like one three times the size of our Jupiter, orbiting its star in only 83 minutes. And with a surface temperature hotter than many stars, they say its atmosphere gets torn apart and atomized on the day side, and doesn't recombine into things like diatomic hydrogen until they cool on the night side. Folk stars have all kinds of outbursts, solar flares, type 1 X-ray events, magnetar bursts, scaling up into the nova category where the smallest of such events are the dwarf nova. They are confined to a thermonuclear plasma instability within the disk surrounding a star, and they are studying one here that reached more than a thousand X brightness before fading. And it must be noted, there's really nothing but guesses when it comes to delineating a dwarf nova versus something slightly larger like a micronova. And same with pulsar X-ray shell releases. They are certainly not the type of nova that sends a massive shockwave throughout the system. And if you're wondering, could this ever happen to the sun? Well, new viewers, got a bit of bad news there. Below the video, click the link to our cosmic disaster movie. It's not only a true story, but a recurring one, and it's worth a watch. Up next, we're back to exoplanets because Hubble was part of a suite of observatories that has exemplified the current best exoplanet imaging of which earthly technology is currently capable. Multiple views of the exoplanet amidst incredibly matching background light sources, which are mostly galactic sitting behind the star and its orbiter there. And we're coming back to the solar wind and our star. We've seen the Parker material from the first release, focused on the plasma physics of the switchbacks, and today we present one of the first attempts to model the plasma and magnetic fields within those switchbacks. The one frame share from their public pre-release paper shows the complexity with which these systems operate, even on small scales within the seemingly sparse solar wind. That complexity rides at high level from the photosphere to the paths through Earth's atmosphere. And folks, part 7, the finale of the Plasma Climate Forcing series, follow-up to our full movie on that topic, which is also linked for you below, went over some key discernment skills and the electrodynamics of the atmosphere, from surface pressure modulation to polar cloud forcing. The full movie and the seven-episode follow-up are now complete. In case you forgot, Cat's first Barnes & Noble book signing is today at lunch at the Briargate location in Colorado Springs. We'll be there 11 to 1 and would love to see you out there. It is Saturday, so we also have our Fly on the Wall podcast, which will be coming out on suspiciousobservers.org in a few hours for website members, and we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.